There were two patients in a two-person room. In one case, a boy was being made into a girl, and in the other, a girl was being made into a boy. The phrase was, just in case, can you cut it off her and sew it onto me? Hello, I am Vasily Kropach, a surgeon. I have been performing sex reassignment surgeries for about 25 years. I graduated from medical university in 1986, but I had been in surgery since my second year because we started early. I've been doing sex reassignment surgeries since the 1990s. Back then, the patients were true transsexuals, according to Benjamin's definition, meaning they didn't feel like the gender they were born with. Psychologists and psychiatrists tried to treat them, but it turned out the only proper solution was surgical. How was your first sex reassignment surgery? I was shocked. Imagine someone coming to you in women's clothing, revealing themselves to be a man and saying, change my sex. It was something else entirely for me. We lived in a very conservative society. I had never encountered them before, so it was quite unusual for us. Did you refuse the person back then? I was just scared. It wasn't so much a refusal as not knowing what to do. I decided to learn more about transsexuals. I went to another city to study and learned how it was done. Somehow, word about me spread, I think. They started coming to me on their own. The second patient had two adopted children, a real manly man who turned out to be a woman after undressing. He was working, married, and afraid to reveal that he was actually a woman. In clothes, it was almost impossible to tell. But he lived in the South and wanted, for example, to go to the beach. We really went all out. First, we removed all his female characteristics, the uterus, the breasts. Then, once everything healed, we made him a penis. In fact, it was too large. We made such a big penis that the surgical nurse flatly refused to allow us to cut off a piece. Eventually, she turned away, we told her something, and in the end, we did cut off a piece because it was just too big. We did the operation with the whole department, and it lasted all night. How do you turn a girl into a boy? Yes, let's start with that, the most popular question. First, psychiatrists conduct testing. They observe and listen, and then make a diagnosis. Transsexuality used to be positioned as a disease, with a diagnosis. After that, the person was put on hormones. The hormonal composition changes naturally. The levels were adjusted to the proper hormonal level to avoid withdrawal syndrome. After that, we, the surgeons, got permission to operate. So, we remove the reproductive organ, that is, the uterus the uterus and its appendages. Then we remove the mammary gland. Now, if we're creating a penis, there are several techniques. One involves taking a portion of the abdominal flap from the back. The flap is skin, skin, subcutaneous layer, fascia, and muscle. All of this is rolled up and formed into a on the vessels, and the vessels are sewn to the inguinal ones. There is also a technique of taking flaps from the groin. Incisions are made in the groin along the fold, so they are not visible and are covered by underwear. If two flaps are made and folded this way, they are still on vessels and nerves. So, it ends up being sensitive, warm, and attaches well. It looks like a sausage, like a sausage. The only thing is, two things, regarding whether the penis gets erect or not. In the versions we did initially, the erection was constant because the muscle is strong. Now we do it so that if desired, a small canal can be made to insert a silicone prosthesis, but no one uses this. Usually, two or three strong condoms are worn, which compress it, making it firm. The main thing is that it has sensitivity. The vaginal opening is almost entirely closed. The urethra is left as it was. Why? Because from a hygiene standpoint, it is more convenient. So, there is a penis, but underneath, the urethra remains in the female position. So, urination happens in a seated position, which is more hygienic. After the operation, the person has to stay on hormones for life. When turning a boy into a girl naturally, castration is done, the testicles are removed, the skin of the penis, let's call it that, is turned inside out to form a vagina. The urethra is moved to the female position. Then we work with the gland's penis, which is not easy. Why? Because the glands must retain both blood supply and nutrition. It is placed like a cervix. We create an entrance to the vagina as if it belongs to a woman who hasn't given birth, so it's narrow. 
There are simpler techniques, where the entrance is made from the scrotum. It results in a different kind of entrance. Well, it's a matter of practice. Even when creating a female breast from a male chest, let's say, the nipples are arranged differently. So, if I put the implant in a certain way, the nipples will be positioned like this. We can shift them a little from the inside, or do it entirely differently, and the implant shape is also different. Sometimes people bring photos of porn actresses and say, I want breasts like these. But that's just a dream. The shape is still different. The funniest thing was when I made a very beautiful girl. Later, she came running back with such excitement. You did such a great job, everything turned out so well. Do you want to try it? I nearly lost my mind. In the end, I got out of the situation very simply. I explained to her, you see, I made this, so you are like my children, and one doesn't enter into such relationships with their children. That's the story. There's a ratio of boy to girl. The percentage of those wanting to transition from female to male and from male to female. And there's an interesting point. Most printed works in the world describe male to female transitions. The majority, 10 to 1. Only one case out of 10 is the other way around. In my practice, mostly girls wanted to become boys. This is a more complex surgery because, let's say, cutting off is always easier. Now, it's probably about even. How long does a gender reassignment surgery take? The first ones took about six to eight hours. This year, we completed it in about four hours. But we now work with two teams and rotate. Why? Because, how can I say, it's microsurgery. Try sitting in one place and staring at one point for six hours. You might just keel over but I do the main stage. Then I walk around, move. Another very experienced surgeon takes over for a few centimeters. Then I sit down again, and he rests during this time. Have any hermaphrodites come to you? Of course. A hermaphrodite is someone with characteristics of both genders. This means having both male and female sex organs. I've had several requests for surgery. Visually, it was a man. He had a penis and everything. But right behind the penis, there was an entrance to the vagina. And the question was whether to lean towards making him a boy or a girl, whichever was closer. Do you like your job? Regarding gender reassignment? No, it's tough. It's not always psychologically satisfying, neither for the surgeon nor in general, because several times I've operated a very beautiful girl very beautiful. We had to make a boy, and we all were worried. And vice versa. A very beautiful boy and girl, but it was decided better to change the gender in both cases. Why? Because there were suicide attempts. Being a surgeon who deals with gender reassignment is, well, it's a duty. It's a sense of medical duty. If I can do it, and I know I can do it better than others, then it has to be done. I never met Hippocrates himself, but I did take the oath. Transsexuals are just like everyone else. That's the first thing to remember. And why did they come to me? They even organized a kind of club. They would come to my office and from seven to nine they would sit, talk and drink tea. They had nowhere else to go. Because they felt safe, because I treated them like ordinary people. I didn't point fingers, there goes one. And my nurses did too. The whole staff treated them the same way.